Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to the daily quiz. So before we look at the questions for today, please remember that we are offering one-on-one -on -one counseling for UPSC aspirants. All you have to do is share your details in the Google form for which the link is provided in the description box below and also in the pinned comment below. Just share your details and our counselors will get in touch with you. So let's begin with the first question for today. Consider the following statements. Project Tiger is a centrally sponsored scheme. India is now home to more than 70% of the world's wild tigers. As per the fifth All India Tiger Estimation 2022, India has around 3,167 tigers. The International Big Cat Alliance was launched by India. How many of these statements are correct? First, let me tell you the correct answer and then we'll understand the context and the explanation. All the four statements are correct with regard to Project Tiger and Tiger Conservation in India. So the right answer is option D. All the four given statements are correct. Let's see why did we pick this question on Project Tiger. Today in the PIB, there is a press release to mark the 50th anniversary of Project Tiger and also to provide an update on the year-end achievements of the NTC, the National Tiger Conservation Authority. See, Project Tiger was launched in the year 1973 with the aim of conserving this threatened species. As the tiger population had dwindled to alarming numbers, Project Tiger was launched 50 years ago. So this year we have marked and celebrated the success of Project Tiger on its 50th anniversary. The NTCA, which is responsible for implementing Project Tiger, it was established as a statutory body under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Today we have more than 50 tiger reserves in India which are administered by the NTCA along with the state governments. This is a centrally sponsored scheme, meaning the central government partially funds the initiative, the center provides the assistance with some funding from the states. So that is why it is a centrally sponsored scheme. And according to the latest tiger census, the fifth edition of the All India Tiger Estimation Survey, India has around 3167 tigers which accounts for nearly 70% of the wild tiger population. And Prime Minister Modi also launched the International Big Cat Alliance. While marking the 50th anniversary of Project Tiger earlier in April, the International Big Cat Alliance was launched by India and it was seen as a pet project of Prime Minister Modi. The goal of this international alliance being pushed by India is to promote the conservation of all the seven big cats. This includes the tiger, lion, leopard, snow leopard, cheetah, jaguar and puma. The goal is to bring around 97 range countries together to collaborate in this global effort to conserve all the seven big cats. So that is why all the four given statements are correct and option D is the right answer. Now let's look at question number two. Consider the following, Crater Sea Mount is an active submarine volcano in the Andaman Sea. It has the potential to erupt at any time, leading to earthquakes and even tsunamis in the Java Sumatra region. It was discovered recently by the National Institute of Oceanography under CSIR. How many of the above statements are incorrect? First, let's look at the answer and then of course the context and the explanation. Amongst the given statements, statement 1 is absolutely correct, statement 2 is also correct, statement 3 is also correct. The right answer is option D. None of the given statements are incorrect. This question has been picked because we have a press release from PIB that is providing a year-round summary of the achievements of CSIR, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has registered a very successful year in 2023. It has seen many achievements, many inventions and discoveries. So CSIR has several research institutions and labs across the country which functions under it. And NIO, the National Institute of Oceanography, which is a CSIR lab and an organization under CSIR, registered a major discovery this year. 
This was the discovery of an active underwater submarine volcano in the Andaman Sea near the Nicobar Islands, very close to Indonesia. A team of NIO researchers, they discovered this active submarine volcano, which is known as Crater Seamont. Studies have established that at any point this underwater crater could erupt causing earthquakes and tsunamis in the region that is in the Java Sumatra region. This underwater crater it is found right between the Nicobar Islands of India and the Java Sumatra region of Indonesia. I hope you know that this region that you can see here in the map is a seismically very active region. It lies on the outer edge of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So from Java, Sumatra of Indonesia all the way till Andaman, Nicobar of India, this highly seismic zone extends towards the India-Myanmar region. It's highly prone to earthquakes, volcanoes and tsunamis as well. In fact, Barren Island, which is India's active volcano on land, is also found in the same belt. So in this region, an uh, underwater crater volcano has been discovered by the NIO under CSIR. So that was in news throughout this year and it's one of the big achievements of the CSIR. Now the question is what exactly is a sea mount? A sea mount is essentially an underwater mountain like structure which is often found along the plates of mid-Atlantic ridges. At mid-Atlantic ridges tectonic plates will be drifting apart which is an active tectonic and seismic zone so here the molten lava will rise up to form these mount-like structures. This feature can also be found at intraplate hotspots, essentially at the fault lines, the tectonic fault lines. So this is where the hot lava magma could rise up to form these crater sea mounts, which could be volcanic and any eruption here could cause further earthquakes and tsunamis as well. So very close to India, one such crater has been discovered, it's crater Seamount and it is found over here. You can see the star over here. It's right between the Nicobar Islands and the Sumatra region of Indonesia. It's found right along the Andaman Nicobar Sumatra Trench, which is a major fault line that's part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now let's look at question number three. Consider the following statements. The chief secretary of a state is chosen for appointment by the governor of that state. The chief secretary is the highest ranking civil servant at the state level. The chief secretary is appointed for a fixed tenure of five years. How many of these statements are correct? Statement one is absolutely wrong. Because the chief secretary of a state is chosen for appointment by the chief minister of the state, not the governor. Even though the appointment is done in the name of the governor, the decision to select a chief secretary and appoint the chief secretary is the discretion of the CM, the chief minister. Is that clear? It's not by the governor. Governor is just the appointing authority. But choosing the chief secretary for appointment is the power of the chief minister. The second statement is correct. The chief secretary is the highest ranking civil servant in the state bureaucracy. Within the state government, the chief secretary is the highest ranking civil servant. Just like you have the cabinet secretary who is the highest ranking civil servant at the, centers, uh, at the central government. Similarly, the chief secretary, which is a very powerful position, this position happens to be the highest ranking civil service office at the state level. Now, the chief secretary is not appointed for a fixed tenure. There is no fixed tenure. The chief minister can change the chief secretary at any point. This is again left to the discretion of the CM. So there is no fixed tenure. So statement 1 and 3 are incorrect. Only the second statement is right. So option A is the correct answer. Only one. Now why did we pick this question? Because today there is a press release in the PIB which refers to the conference of chief secretaries which was attended even by the prime minister. The chief secretaries of all the states are brought together periodically to review governance and administration in the country. Because this is a very powerful office. The whole state machinery is under the chief secretary. In fact, the chief secretary functions like the right-hand man of the CM. He or she, they come from the IAS, the Indian Administrative Service. 
and as the highest ranking bureaucrat at the state level, they head the state machinery, the state bureaucracy, and they play a critical role in administration and governance. So to achieve coordination between different states and the state bureaucracies, Conference of Chief Secretaries is held every year, which is attended even by the Prime Minister. So please note down some key facts about this office. The Chief Secretary is chosen for appointment by the Chief Minister. The appointment is carried out in the name of the Governor because the Governor is a nominal authority who heads the State Executive. So appointments happen in the name of the Governor, but the decision to choose a certain officer, a senior IAS officer and appoint them as a Chief Secretary is left to the Chief Minister. The Chief Secretary will assist advise and guide the CM in all administrative matters, especially in matters related to the cabinet and the cabinet affairs. With regard to day-to-day -day governance, dealing with disasters, emergencies, with regard to drafting bills, running of the state bureaucracy and the machinery, all these matters, in all these matters, the CM consults with the Chief Secretary of the State. The Chief Secretary comes from the Indian Administrative Service and this position is the senior most position in the civil services at the state level. And as I told you, there is no fixed tenure. They can be removed and a new chief secretary can be appointed at the discretion of the CM. Now coming to question number four, consider the following. Consumer price index for industrial workers, CPI IW, measures inflation based on retail commodity prices collected from markets spread across industrially important centers in the country. It is published once a year before the union budget. It is compiled by the Labour Bureau under the Ministry of Labour and Employment. How many of the statements are correct? Statement 1 is definitely right. CPI inflation is a measure of retail inflation. Now under CPI inflation, there are different types of retail inflation which is measured. One of them is CPI IW. This measures consumer price inflation, retail inflation at the level of industrial workers. So the prices of certain essential commodities which are part of this basket of goods is measured across important markets, across various industrial centers in the country. That is how you can measure the impact of retail inflation on industrial workers by collecting the prices, retail prices across various industrial centers. More than 300 markets are part of this survey. That's where the data is collected and compiled to understand the inflation levels faced by industrial workers. But second statement is wrong. It's not published once a year before the budget. This index is published every month on a month to month basis. And third statement is correct. It is compiled by the Labour Bureau, which is an attached office under the Ministry of Labour and Employment. So 1 and 3 are correct, the right answer would be option B, only 2. We picked this question because we have another important press release today. CPI index for industrial workers for November has been released by the Labour Bureau and it marks a slight increase in retail inflation for industrial workers. So that is why the topic was picked. Now please note down some key points about consumer price index, CPI inflation. As I explained, it measures retail inflation at the retail level and there are four types of CPIs measured in the country. CPI for industrial workers, agricultural laborers, rural laborers and CPI rural urban combined. Out of these four types of CPI index, the first three is brought out by the Labor Bureau, which is under the Ministry of Labor and Employment. The last one, CPI rural urban combined, this is brought out by the NSO, the National Statistical Office. The base year which has been chosen is 2012 for CPI combined. But for CPI industrial workers, recently the base year was changed to 2016 by the Labor and Employment Ministry. These are very, very important facts. Now to measure retail inflation, there is a basket of commodities which are tracked a basket of commodities and services, their prices are tracked at the retail level. This includes food and beverages, fuel and light, housing, clothing, bedding, footwear, etc. So these retail prices are collected across various centers depending upon the index. For industrial workers, it is collected across industrial centers. For agricultural rural labor, it is measured 
in rural areas at the agrarian level and then in urban areas as well the data is captured to bring out the combined index. Now in this basket the highest weightage is given to food and beverages. Food and beverage prices has a huge impact on your retail inflation because this has the highest weightage in the basket. Next, let's take up a question from 2023 prelims paper. It's a very interesting question. Which one of the following countries has been suffering from decades of civil strife and food shortages and was in news in the recent past for its very severe famine? Is it Angola, Costa Rica, Ecuador or Somalia? The correct answer is option D, Somalia. This question is related to international relations and places that were in news. If you are thorough with current affairs, you will be able to track such trends with regard to some important countries. Somalia, which is an East African country located in the Horn of Africa, it has been going through a civil war since 1990s. You even have a, a radical terror organization which has taken control of power in Somalia, which is called Al-Shabaab. It's aligned with terror groups like Al-Qaeda. So the country is going through a civil war. It's largely taken over by terror groups. It is Al-Shabaab which largely funds Somalian pirates to engage in piracy in the Indian Ocean, which is a threat for shipping. And the country is suffering from severe drought, famines and food shortages. This has been a major concern. It was affected by the locust pest as well, which can destroy crops. And due to civil war conditions, lack of administration, agriculture has been destroyed, leading to severe food insecurity and famines. Concern was expressed by United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization as well. That is why this question was picked by UPSC. Right answer here is Somalia. Now coming to the fact of the day. Today the Indian Express carries a very interesting article on dinosaur fossils in India. I hope you know that even in India, especially in the Indian subcontinent, dinosaur fossils have been recorded. Paleontologists who basically study dinosaur fossils have found several evidences across the country indicating the presence of dinosaurs in India in the Jurassic age. Now, there has been a recent finding, a very interesting finding in Madhya Pradesh. In Madhya Pradesh, you find the Bill tribe, which is an indigenous tribe found in Madhya Pradesh. They used to worship a certain deity called the Kakad Bhairav. You can see that here in the image, this stone shaped object, right? This was the sacred deity of the Bill tribe called the Kakad Bhairav. They have been worshipping this from centuries. Now recently it has been proven that this is not just a deity or a stone. It's actually a fossilized dinosaur egg. So this is a very interesting find. And it highlights the need for further conserving such fossils and artifacts, which presents important geological evidence regarding the Indian subcontinent. In fact, there is a push as well to recognize the Bagh region of Madhya Pradesh, where several dinosaur fossils have been found. There is a push from Indian scientists and the Indian government as well to recognize the Bagh region of Madhya Pradesh as the first UNESCO geopark in India. India does not have any geoparks. Under UNESCO, just like you have World Heritage Sites, there are geopark sites as well. Essentially, geological sites which represent the geological evolution of the earth, which hold tremendous geological heritage, they are given this tag by UNESCO. So India is pushing for that because in Madhya Pradesh, a lot of dinosaur fossils have been found. Now you need to be aware of the paleontological evidence found in India. There can be a prelims question based on this. In India, the first dinosaur fossil was discovered by Captain William Sleeman, an English officer who was interested in uh, paleontology. It was back in 1828 that they discovered a dinosaur fossil in the Jabalpur cantonment. In fact, even today near Jabalpur, there is a, a village named after William Sleeman because of his discovery of a dinosaur fossil. Then, the biggest dinosaur believed to have been found in India is the Bara, Barapasaurus Tagori. Its 4 meter fossil was found. It is believed to be a 4 meter tall sauropod. And this is believed to be the biggest dinosaur that was found in India. Then, in the Cretaceous period, 
evidence has been discovered from the Cretaceous period regarding the presence of Titanosaur because these eggs were also found in 1980s. Specifically around Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh around the Bagh region. In India, this is quite common. You find this across Narmada Valley, even in Gujarat as well and in other parts of the Indian subcontinent. And this is also direct evidence to prove the theory of continental drift and the existence of a supercontinent called Gondwana land. Because similar evidence is found in Australia, Madagascar, South America and Australia and uh, Antarctica. Gondwana land is this supercontinent which was an uh, amalgamation of all these regions that you have today which was part of one supercontinent in the southern hemisphere. Eventually they have drifted apart as a result of continental drift. So the evidence that you find here, the archaeological and the paleontological evidence is critical to understand the very evolution of the geology of the region. In India, the fiercest dinosaur believed to have existed is the Rajasaurus, a carnivorous dinosaurus, which is depicted here. The fossils have been found in Madhya Pradesh. Hundreds of nesting sites have been discovered with several fossilized eggs, which have been preserved in decent condition. The prime site in India is, of course, Madhya Pradesh, the Narmada Valley region and Gujarat. These are the best sites where paleontological evidence, including well-preserved dinosaur eggs, have been found. Apart from this, dinosaur eggs and dinosaur fossils have been found in Maharashtra, in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu as well. So kindly make a note of these sites and the Rajasaurus, which is believed to have been found in India, is linked with the Majungatholus. And these fossils are found in Madagascar. So this is another direct evidence to show that Madagascar at one point was connected and linked with the Indian subcontinent. In fact, even today, there is actual physical evidence in the Indian subcontinent to prove that Madagascar at one point was connected to India. This region that I'm mentioning here, it's of great economic and geographical significance. If you know which region is this that provides evidence of the link between Indian subcontinent and Madagascar, if you know that the place of that name, please mention that in the comments below. So on this note, I would like to conclude the daily quiz for today. I hope the session has been useful. If you liked it, do comment below, press the like button and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we are offering one-on-one -on -one counseling for UPSC aspirants. All you have to do is fill the Google form. The link is in the pinned comment in the description box below. And our counselors will get in touch with you to guide you through your UPSC preparation. So that is it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.